My name is Jens Meiler. I'm a full professor in the Department of Chemistry. I do also have appointments in the departments of uh, pharmacology and biomedical informatics. The focus of my research is computational biology. Um, we develop computer algorithms that solve important biomedical questions with new and uh, innovative approaches. And um, the second focus of my laboratory is then to collaborate with scientists um, at Vanderbilt University to test these algorithms and demonstrate that indeed they have an impact on um, the treatment of patients, for example. Our primary tool is the computer. So um, about half of the students or trainees in my laboratory actually program computer algorithms to um, come up with uh, new and exciting uh, approaches to solve important biomedical problems. Um, these algorithms are then applied in collaboration with other scientists. For uh, this application phase, we need um, high performance computing. We need thousands of computers working simultaneously to solve these very uh, difficult problems. So Vanderbilt um, has an advanced center for computing and research and education, and this center provides us with uh, six or 7,000 computers that we can in parallel use to um, solve some of these computer problems that otherwise would take years to, to solve. And uh, the third tool that is critical is actual visualization. Um, we develop structural models of proteins to say understand um, how the mutation of in a protein that is found in a patient might alter the function of that protein and maybe be responsible for a particular disease that this patient has. And um, in this research, it is very important to um, actually look at the protein structure and really understand which interactions between certain parts of the protein might be disrupted because of the change that is observed in this particular genome that is not present in a, in a healthy person. And uh, so visualization of these proteins is the, is the third important tool. In collaboration with uh, scientists across the campus, I use many other technologies in experimental biology, um, um, molecular biology, structural biology techniques, all the way to uh, the treatment of patients in the, in the cancer center. But in my lab, primarily we use computational tools. I wanted to always study mathematics and become a mathematician. Um, but at some point, I think in eighth or ninth grade, I got interested in chemistry and um, uh, studied more chemistry, decided then to do my bachelor's in chemistry, and um, got at that point interested in particular in biochemistry. And then throughout my um, doctoral research, I realized how mathematics and computer science can actually contribute to discovery in biochemistry and then later in biomedical research. And that really um, was uh, a very important point in my career when I started to use my math and my programming skills to solve my, uh, the, the scientific questions I had during my PhD. Um, well, for me, it's really what drives my, my studies. Uh, I'm in the chemistry department that is a basic science department. I'm, uh, my research relies heavily on computer science, mathematics, physics. So um, what I am fascinated about is really to come up with novel approaches to biomedical research, and these novel approaches are basic science approaches. So we, in my group, we have mathematicians, computer scientists, chemists, physicists, you, you name it, who all work as a team together to develop a new way to think about a biomedical problem. And what then fascinate, fascinates me, if I can demonstrate that this new approach really works out in the clinical setting. So if we can demonstrate that our new idea has a demonstrable impact in biomedical research. Well, I can tell you a few success stories. So um, one of our current 
projects focuses on uh, personalized medicine. So we work very closely with researchers in the cancer center who often in patients discover what we call um, variants of unknown significance, novel mutations in cancer cells. And um, it, for, for the patient, it is critical to determine the optimal treatment strategy. Um, we work in the uh, Center for Structural Biology and in my group to build uh, models of these proteins that then include the mutations that we find in these cancer patients. And from these models, we can make sometimes predictions um, that uh, which uh, drug uh, would be the optimal treatment for that patient. And we have um, a few success stories um, where we actually could demonstrate that these uh, uh, therapeutics that we chose via our prediction indeed um, let the tumor shrink. Another success story that I am um, uh, very proud of is um, my laboratory develops um, computer algorithms that allow us to engineer proteins. So we can design proteins that in that form does not, do not exist in nature. And um, in particular, we have been developing algorithms that allow us to design very large proteins, proteins that then simultaneously bind to multiple other proteins. And this becomes important in um, uh, um, uh, treating diseases like um, HIV. Um, the HIV virus, virus mutates very rapidly. And if you want to neutralize the virus, you need one antibody that binds to all of these forms of the virus. We can simulate that in the computer. We can design a single antibody to bind to all of these forms of the HI virus. And then we work with our vaccine center here to produce these antibodies and test them. And this improved understanding on how the optimal antibody would look like that would neutralize all forms of these viruses, we believe will ultimately inform the design of a vaccine that then could protect people from uh, the HI virus and therefore from, from AIDS. So uh, in my laboratory over the past 12 years, I trained about 150 undergraduate students, graduate students, postdoctoral fellows, staff scientists. And there are many, many success stories amongst those students. For example, um, I had a physicist, a student who studied physics as an undergraduate degree, who joined my laboratory uh, early on in 2006, um, just when I started to build up my lab. And he applied his knowledge in physics to develop novel computational algorithms that uh, predict the structure of um, viral proteins from um, data that we get from a technology called electron microscopy. That's a very uh, up and coming uh, technology in the field of structural biology to understand um, how the shape uh, of, of proteins. And he wrote computer algorithms that were really revolutionizing um, that field. So that student um, graduated from my group, went on to do a postdoc in another field of computational biology and it has now a faculty position at um, uh, the University of Ohio in, in Columbus. And um, so students, the, the training in my laboratory is um, uh, special in the sense that um, students experience this translational research where they develop a computer algorithm and then move on and in collaboration with another faculty member uh, here, uh, Phoebe Stewart, who, who does electron microscopy, apply uh, this technology to an important biomedical research problem. And I think that this type of training is particularly important to, um, for the next generation of, uh, of scientists in this field. I believe that um, biomedical research in the future going to become even more translational, even more interdisciplinary. So um, my advice would be to look for not just one area of expertise where you excel, but try to identify two or even three areas where you 
uh, really develop your skills. And this includes um, you know, areas of basic science such as programming or physics or chemistry, but also um, really applied areas such, for example, immunology. And then uh, opportunities emerge at the interfaces of these, of these um, areas. So um, look for research challenges that really leverage um, multiple of these areas, bring them together in a new and an exciting and an exciting way. And there's really a lot of room for creativity to come up with uh, ideas how to combine your interests. Other advices are you should work on an area where you're really excited about so that you're intrinsically motivated to work on that. Research should be fun because um, throughout your graduate or postgraduate career, you're going to work a lot. You're going to work much more than 40 hours on your research project. So you should at least um, have the benefit of being really excited and driven by that because otherwise it's not, um, not sustainable for an extended period of time. Vanderbilt um, for me is an ideal um, uh, location to do my research because of its um, interdisciplinary translational environment. The basic science departments are really close to applied biomedical research departments, not just spatially but also in culture. It's really easy to collaborate. Um, for me, uh, Vanderbilt is also um, a wonderful place to be because of its trans-institutional initiatives. So for me in particular, the Center for Structural Biology was instrumental and is instrumental as it provides experimental technologies to study the structure of proteins and these technologies really complement very nicely what I do computationally. Uh, also critical for me was the Institute um, of Chemical Biology where um, uh, researchers come together that want to use um, chemicals, small molecules, as probes and tools to study biology. And um, these are the areas, structural biology and chemical biology, where we develop our computer algorithms having scientists who are interested in doing experimental work in these areas is critical for me as a computational person to test my predictions and ideas. Sure. I grew up in East Germany in Leipzig. Um, I went there to school and also completed my bachelor's in chemistry and my master's in chemistry from Leipzig University. I then moved to Frankfurt um, and did my PhD in uh, also chemistry, but already with a focus on uh, biomolecular uh, structure. I uh, moved from Frankfurt to uh, Seattle, uh, the University of Washington in Seattle, um, and uh, completed there a four-year postdoctoral training. And from Seattle, I moved to uh, Nashville, uh, to Vanderbilt University, where I have been ever since.